welcome once again, fans of flip clocks. We have a clockworks mechanism here that is not working. This is part of a flip clock that we're going to get going again. So we're going to work from the inside out this time. Something different. To get this thing going again, we've got to address these points here. This is where the gears come through to the plate, and those can be called oil wells. The axles there are called arbors, and they get dirty, so we're going to clean this out with a toothpick. You may not be able to tell, but I'm getting some dirt out of there. So I'm going to go through and clean out each one of these and then eventually we'll oil it up to see if that's the problem. The thing is, whenever you have a spot like that, you'll have a spot on the other side as well. That spring there is for the alarm, that's not for the clockworks. There's the spring for the clockworks. But this little, this little brass piece here seems to be press fit on there. And I really don't want to get that far into it. So I'm going to see if I can not clean underneath this plate and then oil underneath this plate. And I think I can. So here's our oil that we're going to apply. Now your experts are going to have special tools to do this. We're just going to use a toothpick. I don't do this very often. I seem to be doing it more often because I've been getting these little clocks. I don't know why I'm into them. So you're supposed to just apply a dab of oil there. If you put too much, it'll run out, they say. It'll pull the rest of the oil out with it. So just a little bit of oil on each spot is all you need. And the same thing on the underside. Now in manipulating the clock, it just started working all of a sudden. The balance wheel just took off. So it's pretty clear that that's what the problem was. So here we are, it's going, and it's actually hard to stop. Now if this clock mechanism, this clockworks was in place in the clock, you see just a little bit of manipulation, we'll get that thing going again. So we're in good shape. This little brass piece is the part that's going to impact that clock mechanism there. I have to try to figure out how to get it set so that when I put it back together it's going to be right, the time's going to be right. So I'm going to use the alarm function. So it's going off around 8. What I'll do is I'll set it to 8 o'clock. Then I'll turn the hand, this would be turning the flip tiles there. So that should be set for 8 o'clock. We'll double check. There. So this, this clockworks mechanism here should be set to go for 8. I'll get this set for 8. Now you see there's no AM and PM, it's just one set of numbers. So it's an older clock, it's not very fancy. That little wheel there, that's got to, that's got to take that brass piece. So I'll have to manipulate it a little bit just to get it in place without knocking everything out of time. To get it secured, there's three screws. Now, I, I tighten everything up, but I don't crank on it. I don't think there's any need for that. This is just one little screw that holds everything in place. We'll get that back in. Now the cover also acts as the bell for the alarm. We have to make sure that the speed set there on the bottom of the screw, there's a thing that slides over top of the setter inside there. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then three brass screws will hold this bell in place. Those are right in the center so it has some sort of a tone. 
it's sort of suspended there. Well, we've put the whole contraption inside the clock, so you may, it may be familiar to you at this point. You may have seen a clock like this before. They're not fancy clocks, they're not famous clocks, but they do show up on eBay from time to time. So maybe this will give you more confidence to get one if they say it's not working. You are taking a chance whenever you get a clock like that though. Now, this is where all the knobs go. You see that brass sleeve there? It's got a split in it, and so it's pushing over top of that post. It looks a little bit like a nail. It looks sharp. There's no stop to it, so I just kind of judge how far to push that on. Same thing here. This is the alarm set. And that's probably far enough. making sure everything seats together well. It looks like it's doing okay. We'll go ahead and put the, the, the knobs to wind the clock. This one is to wind the clock itself and you'll notice that I'm turning it counterclockwise so it has left-handed threads and that's also the way you would turn it to wind the clock itself. It makes sense. The alarm pull knob here actually has right hand threads. I'm going to screw that on. Seems to be working just fine. Okay, so just two brass screws go in the back. Let's see if this looks familiar to anybody. This is an Elgin. It's an Elgin wind-up flip clock alarm. Turned out pretty good. It's cleaned up well. Now there's some things I didn't show you about the clock. Check the alarm wheels here. That's the alarm wheels working fine. The clock flips fine. And everything's together. So there's a, there's something I was got in the middle of, I thought, well, I'm going to clean this out. So I'd, uh, do I clean the glass out with it in place? And this is actually glass, so you know it's older, it's not plastic. But this metal bezel here is holding the glass in place. There's a little corrosion right there. Also, the bezel's dirty. You can see I'm cleaning it, I'm wiping some filth away there. Now to get that off, that metal part, there's tabs in each corner. Now the original assembler grabbed a hold of those and twisted them. So to get that off, I've, I would have to untwist that and straighten it as best I could and then push it out. So there's always a risk when you do that. These are thin metal. You could bend it. You're never going to get it right again if you bend it. My inner voice says don't do it. It ain't worth it. And nine times out of ten it's right, but I didn't listen to my inner voice got it off. So we're going to polish it up and protect it a little bit using this Renaissance Micro Crystalline Wax Polish. So that should, should buff it up real good, but also protect it from further corrosion. You just apply a little bit and then you buff it out. The glass, I was able to get it pretty clean. It has a place where it drops right down in there, so it, it seats really nicely. I'm not going to jiggle around. Let me put the metal bezel back in place. I'm putting the corrosion part on the bottom this time. And it's seating back just fine. Now, when I secure it, I'm not going to do the twist that the original Sumber did. I'm probably just going to bend it down so that 
if someone else wants to clean that glass or if I still have it in the years to come and I want to clean that, it will be a lot easier to get out. You know, the assembler, originally, they just didn't want it to move. No one thought people would be collecting these or repairing them. So there it is. Elgin, Japan. Wind up flip clock alarm. It's got a burl wood look to it on the back side there. Now you know what all those knobs and buttons are for. It's a nice looking little clock and not hard to work on. Thanks for taking the time.